Falche. Hello. Cade Mila Falche. Gach Dina Galera. 100,000 welcomes, everybody, to live Irish myths. I'm Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland. You're very welcome along to episode number 56. Quega is a Shea. And tonight we're going to be talking about Eru, the goddess who gives her name to Ireland. And in continuation of our Bialtana theme, our Bialtana uh, Ishnak theme, uh, which is very appropriate for uh, the past 48 hours and uh, very interesting um, things that have happened. Uh, first of all, to say that uh, it was really wonderful last night, uh, uh, first and foremost, to be able to watch the great fire at Ishnak, the great Bialtana fire, kindled by the uh, custodian of the site, David Clark, and his wife, Angela, and children. And it was just fantastic, you know? I mean, there were there should have been 5,000 people there. That was the plan. Um, but because of this virus, uh, we, ha we all had to watch from afar. But uh, I hope that it had the same uh, impact on you as it had on me. Uh, and the giant heart around the central flame was just brilliant from the heart of Ireland. Um, then to see all of your... Uh, Bialtana flames, your fires, your candles, uh, all your various uh, goings on uh, for La Fela Bialtana. It was really heartwarming. So let's uh, continue to hope that the flame of purification of Bialtana, which is what it was all about traditionally, will help to purify us and rid us of this awful plague uh, and help us to return to full health as a community. This evening, uh, I want to say thanks to Enrique Messageur for the image of the lady that forms part of the graphic tonight um, for episode 56. Uh, and I also have to say hello and thank you to Mythical Ireland's newest patron, who is Herma Klassen. And Herma became a patron uh, over at patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. And if you're interested in doing likewise, Perhaps you might want to uh, scoot across there and have a look uh, and see what's on offer in terms of rewards for your patronage. Uh, in any case, don't worry. I uh, I will continue to do uh, what I do uh, regardless. But uh, your patronage is, of course, very welcome. And I want to thank all of the patrons. Uh, the first of the callers on YouTube tonight is Erica Bow. Good afternoon to you, Erica. How are you? Paul in the Hill of Tara is saying hello from the Royal County Me. Yes, indeed. Just over the way from me here. Uh, Jackie Stevenson. Hi, on time today from hot and sunny California. Lovely stuff, Jackie. Falche. Uh, Raquel Fernandez says hello from Spain. Falche, Raquel, lovely to see you. Natty Lopez is in Buenos Aires. The fire was lovely and very moving, says Natty. Indeed it was, and you're welcome. Daisy Peters. Hi, Anthony Everton. I'm ready for one more marvelous episode. Yesterday I couldn't participate. So here we go. Brilliant, Daisy Falche. Mary Smith says, hello from Switzerland. Gia Rich, Mary. Uh, Erica Rivertree, Banachty, or Louisville, Kentucky. Excited for tonight's topic, Eru. And you're very welcome, Erica. Fall to more. Mandy McCurl says, hello, everyone, from a warm, sunny evening on the Isle of Mulland. I think we share the Boyne Valley and the Isle of Mull seem to share the, exactly the same weather conditions, Mandy, most of the time anyway. So good evening to you, Trononawa. Uh, Tina Trana says, many thanks. Enjoying the daily videos from Moscow, Idaho. Well, you're very welcome, Tina, and I'm glad to hear that. Fault you more. Uh, Joan McHugh is in Ben Ether, or in Hoth, and says, Giagrich, Konos Toshiv Ovan Ether. We're fantastic. Siwan Shuan is an Uh You're very welcome, Siwan, or Shuan Shuan, isn't it? Shuan. Uh, yeah, you're very welcome, and I hope. Uh, yes, I did indeed. I shared your picture, uh, and there was a nice response to that today. Josie Weatherford is in Austin and in Texas, and says hello. Giagutch, Josie, Connor Puckle, Giagive, Anton August, Toa Netflix. Enjoy watch the fire Tishnock last night. Brilliant stuff, wasn't it? Just superb. Uh, welcome, Connor. Daisy Peters is on time. Thank you, gods and goddesses. <laughs> And on Facebook, oh, oh dear, yes, it's going to take us a while to get going tonight. That's always a good complaint. Aaron Durrett is the first. 
uh, announcement on Facebook. Who's watching? Hello, Aaron. Uh, ben Hancock. Hello from Missouri. Gia Rich. Jules Cousins is waving. Falcher Jules. Megan Walters. Greetings. Once again, Slauncha, uh, Megan. Uh, Anya Waldron says hi. Gia Rich. Anya. Ben Hancock. Great walk earlier today. Yes, indeed. Lovely to get out back into the Boyne Valley to the monuments and to enjoy just being there, you know. Serena Swift, I'm here. Thought I wouldn't make it, but scheduled plans fell through. Yes, wonderful stuff, Serena. Falcha. Cheryl Ann McFetridge is saying cheers and love from Boston. Falcha. Uh, Barbara Kling, Geoglitch, Anthony Augustua. Hello from Vermont. Slauncha, Barbara. And Barbara Barney is saying hi, Anthony Geoglitch. Uh, Mike and Jeanette are in a cloudy and overcast New Jersey, but they're joining us uh, in good form, I hope. Hello, Mike and Jeanette. Hope all is well. Pamela Walter says, Banachti from the Netherlands. Uh, Banachti, Tusa fame, uh, to fame, Pamela. Megan Walters. I shed a wee tear myself. I can understand why. Ishnuk Fire, hope from Neolithic Times, says Ralph Waldron. Melanie Corpy says, hello from the USA. Falcha, Melanie. Rob Bestenbostel is uh, joining us and uh, sending us a big heart. Cree, Cree more uh, and uh, a Graw Lat. Uh, Bob, or Graw Ort. Mm. Love to you, Anthony, on the two of us, says Aaron Durrett. Galtano was spectacular. I hope we're able to celebrate the solstice together in the same way. Thanks, dear Tua. We'll figure something out, Aaron. Don't worry. We'll, we'll have a celebration. Thera Hoekstra says, hi all, good to be back and welcome back, Thera. Nick Eska Casterton says, good evening. Anthony and all the Tua. Folge. Tranonawa. Mariana Dunn says, hello, Anthony and dear Tua from Virginia. Last evening was so heartwarming, wasn't it just, you know? Demi Woe is in Colorado. Loved the fire last night on Chinamore. Uh, Melanie Lynn is watching. Hi, Melanie. Jack Durkin says, hi, everyone. Folge. Freya Shoholm. Tranonawa. Gach dinna. Love. From Sweden. Good evening, everybody. Love from Sweden. Tranonawa, Freya. Cheryl Ann McFetridge. Cheers and love from Boston. Last night's fire was wonderful. Margaret Ring is in the house. Good evening, Anthony and all the Tua. Folge, Margaret. Merit Braun Schmidt says, hello, I'm back. Couldn't be here yesterday. So sad. Don't worry. And I hope you're able to catch up on the video. Melanie Lynn saying, hello all. Folge, Melanie. How are you keeping? Federica Guy. Ciao, Anthony and Tua. The fire was fabulous. Great emotions. Ciao, Federica. Lovely to see you again. Serena Swift says, hello all. How is everyone? Well, I'm Grant, and I think everyone else is in good form too. Liam Smith, Giri, Vanton, August Natua. Falcha, Liam. Laura McCormick, a very good evening to all from a windswept kill it all in South Tipperary. Thank you, Anthony. Looking forward to tonight's story. Good stuff, Laura. Lovely to see you. Patricia McAteer is watching. Falcha, Patricia. Alex Casterton, good evening. Anthony Antua. Falcha, Alex. Tom King, good evening, Anthony Antua. I feel purified. Ta on goa ishji. What a lovely gathering of community last evening. So heartwarming. Well done, one and all. I'm still wearing it, Tom. It's been round my neck all day. Fantastic stuff. Shannon Winokur is in the house. Hello, Anthony and Tua. So looking forward to hearing about Eru. It's cold and rainy here in Baltimore, Maryland. Maybe we should spread a little bit of that lovely Irish weather we're having at the moment. But it's great to see you, Shannon. Hello, says Patricia. The fires were inspiring, as is your wonderful artwork, Patricia. And thank you for sharing it on the Mythical Ireland community page. Uh, it's great to see a growing community on there as well. There's a new item on the bookshelf, a lovely Triskelion. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that last night, Macy. That was a beautiful gift from uh, Tom King, uh, who was just commenting a, a few comments above you. Uh, and uh, in, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as an unexpected uh, thank you gift for... Uh, doing live Irish myths uh, from one of the Mythflix tour uh, and uh, great, greatly moved to receive that, I can tell you. And it means a lot. Uh, and, and by the way, this is part of it. Uh, that and the and the uh, the Triskel and the... Uh, is that a liar, Tom? Is that what you'd call it? A uh, little liar. Maureen O'Leary. Hello, Anthony and all from Northwest Minnesota. So anxious to learn more about Eru today. Can you let us know the meaning of her name, please? And maybe of the other names as you go. Makes the story much easier to understand. Mm, I'll do my best. Haven't recovered from last night yet, says Margaret. It was so beautiful. Indeed, and it was. Henry Paddy Shearman. Evening to a can't stop studying. Can't stop. Studying on a webinar. We'll catch up later. That's perfectly okay, Henry. Study away. No problem. Susan Scott, who was another person whose picture was shared today, says, hello, hello, just joining now. Love the walk around the countryside earlier today. You're very welcome, Susan. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Snapper Earl says, howdy from Ulster, 
County, Hudson Valley, New York State, Folge, Trononawa, Snapper, Alex Casterton. Very sunny and amazing day here in Albion in Mercia. Yeah, it's a beautiful day here too. Maeve Fianna Callahan says, Trononawa, Akarja. Uh, Trononawa, Maeve, it's lovely to see you. Good evening, Auntie Nantua. I feel purified. Oh, it's the same comment again, Tom. Don't know why that happened. Josephine Meehan, don't worry. Josephine Meehan, Trononawa, Anthony Antua. You're very welcome, Josephine. Doris O'Hara says, good evening, Anthony. And all from Heidelberg, Fauci. Jiguch. Megan Walters. I've been a bit untethered the past five days with all the magic in the air. Not a bad thing. And a big smiley face. That's okay, Megan. Poji Machamuel. Oh, Glasgow, Alba. Bergi Boa. Tua is Tronawad Gif. Bergi Boa Tua. And uh, all the same. Right back to you, Poji. And you're very welcome along. Ta Hello. Tua and Anthony from Keene, New York. Thanks for everything. A most wonderful, a most wonder-filled Bialtana. Hi, Yvette. Lovely to see you again. Steve Martinson is in Madison in Wisconsin. Love to you all. Grow more art, Steve, from all of us. Lloyd Stillwell is also from Missouri. Falcha Lloyd, nice to see you. Gary McCracken, back watching down the road from you. Uh, and I think Gary is in Drehadaha, here in Drehada, in the Boyne Valley. Alan Briette is in Rhode Island and says, hello, Falcha, Alan. Pat Rowan is watching. Pat messaged me earlier to say he's back at work and he drives for a living. So he is going to be listening as best he can, if he can hear us properly, but he's not going to be able to interact with us. But it's good to have you along, Pat. Stay safe on those roads. And uh, sure, look, it's good to know that you're there anyway. Andrea Logoya says, ciao. Ciao, Andrea. Lorna Evers Monaghan. Hello, everyone. Giacuich, Lorna. To a light, you bring so you bring such good slauncher, says Pat. I presume you pulled in to type that, Pat. Good man yourself. Brilliant. Mark Ledger saying, cheerings from Townsville, North Australia. The fires were be brilliant. Thanks to you and the clerks at Ishnock. Absolutely, Mark. And it's lovely to see you. Good morning to you. Majin Ma Tosa. Uh, Art. Paul Garren says, hello, family from Rock, County Dublin, Hangar 6. <laughs> hey, Paul. Trina Nierk says, Giri from Germany to all Angora Milamahagut for this lovely uniting broadcast. Hi, Trina Falche. Lovely to see you. Rowan Grove, a little late in Colorado, uncooperative internet. Don't worry, we haven't started telling the scale, scale, scale to more. Uh, Sarah Davis is in southern Illinois. A lot of Illinoisers in the house today, and they're not at all annoying. <laughs> hello, Sarah. Deirdre Magner says, hello, Giagrich, Deirdre. Nora Gaffney O'Connor, Icha Wat Matua, Kane Kuya Vilshiv, Tommy Goma, uh, Nora, still buzzing from last night's spectacular celebrations and lovely chats on the comments. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was really, really, really heartwarming. Kristen Gray Tigert says, Gia Grieve to Anthony and the Tua from a Windy Davis in California last night. It was a wonderful celebration. Thank you for that. Brilliant stuff. You're very welcome. Movanwe says, love your film of doubt, Anthony. It's incredible to see the birds in the countryside. I haven't left the house for almost two weeks while I recover from COVID-19. I lit my candles last night for healing and it seems to have helped my symptoms. Beautiful film of Ishnak brought tears to my eyes and we wish you the best uh, uh, for your recovery and a full and uh, reco re full recovery to, to complete health, Movanwe. Dave Russell says, hi all from Area One, Area 51, Nevada. Gorgeous weather here today in beautiful Ireland. <laughs> Veronica Casey says, good evening all. Trunonawa, you're welcome along, Veronica. Therese McGuinness, hope you're feeling much better shortly. Yes, our best wishes to Movanwe. Sorry. <coughs> A penicular pen pen brooch, my friend, says Tom. Ah, penicular. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I have to write that down afterwards. Martin Hughes is watching. Fall to Martin. John Roach says, greetings from Dyfed, the Welsh share our mitts. I'm not sure if that's how to, I pronounce that, John, but fall to. You're very welcome along. Please forgive me if it's not the right pronunciation. Peter Donald is in Woodstock, New York. Fall to Peter. Katrina is in the house. Via Antina or Ishnach Iantok Arfad. Mas Don Fibora. Yeah, it was absolutely fabulous, wasn't it? Judy McQueen says, hello, Falcha, Giagrich, Judy. My copy of Newgrange speaks for itself. 40 carved motifs just arrived, says Rowan Grove. Not only, 
And not only was this used copy signed by the author, there's a photograph of her stapled inside the back cover. Wow, nice. That's really special. Her own lovely stuff. Tom Lawler, well done for yesterday evening. Magical L and L County Tipperary. Fault you, Tom. Casey O'Trassi says hello from Wicklow. Uh, Fault you, Casey. Lovely to see you. Laura O'Reilly, nice to see you again. And you also, Laura Giagrich. Peter Donald is calling in his friend Damon Packard. Untethered Joy in Irish is Machnas. M A C N A S. Machnas. Brilliant. Nora Gaffney O'Connor says hi from Arklow. Giagrich, Nora. Catherine Wall McManus says hello, Anthony and Tua. Fault you, Catherine. Camilla Relland is watching. Hi, Camilla. How are you? Sheila Hawkins. Hi, Anthony and everyone. Or hello, Anthony, even. I can't read some of this because it's against the background. But I'll, I'll, I'll manage. I'll manage. Fault you, Sheila. You're very welcome along. Wendy Holmes. Thank you, Anthony. My belt. And it was amazing. Thanks to you. The fire dish knock made me feel like I was living out of time or all times. And then I lit my own two flames. Thanks to you. Brilliant stuff, Wendy. Delighted to hear that. Trace O'Connor says, good evening, Anthony and all. Falcha. John McAndrew says, good afternoon. Falcha, John. Aaron Durrett, we miss you in the chat. Pat, Pat take care of yourself. Oh, he'll, he'll be grand once he's keeping his eye on the road. Okay, let's just see. Uh, I want to make sure that I don't miss anybody. Okay, wow. Damon Packard says, cheers from LA. I hope to make an ancient Ireland film someday. Music by Clannad and Moya Brennan. Perfect choice of music too. And on YouTube, back to YouTube. Uh, Ronald McFadden in Los Angeles says, hi, Anthony. Just saw your lecture, Monuments, Myths and Alignments and Megalithomania YouTube. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, that, uh, they must have only put that up in the past 24 hours. Uh, uh, somebody told me about it today. It's good to see it anyway. Uh, it was a, a nice event last year. Uh, lots of uh, interesting people and good feedback. Jacinta McGee says, greetings from West Cork. Falcha, Jacinta, good to see you. Uh, Mast Wolf. May I archive your uploads? We may not have internet for very long in my area. I'll leave them be if you'd rather. No, that's okay. If it's for personal use, there's absolutely no problem whatsoever. Helene McGreevy says, such a glorious day in Central California. Mythflix tops it off. Brilliant stuff, Helene. Fault you. Daniel Kedney says, hi, hi, I arrived. Jigwich, Daniel. Theresa Jolly, first time joining from Portland, Oregon because of Tina from Idaho. Well, thank you, Tina from Idaho, Idaho for telling Theresa Jolly to come along. Theresa, you're very, very welcome along. Theresa is on YouTube, and I'm sure that the, the Mythflix, two our members on Mythflix will give her a lovely warm welcome. Very nice to see you. Kendall says, hello. Happy to join live today from the Oregon coast. Hello, Kendall. Falcha. And Lisa O'Hare says, hello from Winchester in England. Falcha, Lisa. Oh, I hope you're keeping well. Welcome along. Joe the Piper was a fantastic addition to the fire last night, says Tina Trana. Absolutely beautiful, wasn't he? Just, wasn't it fabulous? Theo Lad, Smoinchewa is Eher Horki August Gomai Tranona Suvnok Savresh. Eher Is that West again? Is that West Cork again? Lovely to see you, Theo. Fault you. Right. So, where do we start? Where, first of all, we have a look at the time uh, 18.30. Right. So, tonight we're talking about. Uh, uh, the goddess Eru. Now, this is a lady who gives her name to Ireland, uh, and so the uh, Irish name for Ireland is Eire, E for the I or E. And that is where the name Ireland comes from. It's merely a, a little bit of a, a, a corruption of Eire uh, without the E. So I or E, Ireland, Ireland. Um, so who is this mysterious female deity, this woman who uh, who uh, was the one after whom Ireland was named? The funny thing about her is actually that she is not very uh, prominent uh, in Irish myth. And in fact, the only places that you'll really find reference to her are in Laura Gawala Erin, which is the uh, aforementioned many times uh, Book of the Taking of Ireland or commonly known as the Book of Invasions. 
And also briefly, she gets a mention in Koh Mai Chura, the, uh, the second battle of Mai Chura, uh, where she is Bress's mother. And Bress is the one who takes over the running of the country uh, from the uh, injured incumbent Nuadu after Nuadu's arm is lopped off at the shoulder in the first battle of Moitura against the Fir Vulug by the warrior Shring. The curious thing is that uh, it's kind of hard, I have to be honest, to reconcile the two. The mother of Bress, whose reign is, by the way, a complete disaster, it has parallels in the modern political world, but I'm not getting, getting into that, understandably. I'll let you read between the lines. Um, you know that the reign of Bress is such a disaster for the Tua de Danon, uh, and is, I've seen it said uh, in scholarly work, I think in, in Elizabeth Gray's translation of Cot Moitura, that it is the exemplar of uh, incompetent leadership. Um, now, uh, eventually, of course, uh, uh, Nuadu is reinstated to the throne, but his role uh, is very much just to keep the seat warm for the new incumbent who will be Lou Lawford or Lou Samuel Donach, Lou Lononchklech, Lou Macethlin, the many names that he has in mythology. Um, now, in um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. She's the mother of Bress, whose reign is a complete disaster. I'm sure I suppose you can't blame the sins of the son on the mother, so to speak. The other mention is in, uh, and we're going to do an entire episode on the arrival of the Milesians in Lower Gawala. We've done two episodes on the arrival of the Tour de Danon. We did redaction, the first redaction in one episode, and we did the second and third redactions in the next episode, which was only last week. And in fact, I'm just going to have a look just to, if, in case you've joined us or in case you haven't seen those or in case you want to go back and have a look at those uh, when we're finished this evening. Uh, they would be episodes 47 and 48, Lower Gawala and the arrival of the Tua de Danon. So in your in the section about the arrival of the Milesians, who are the sons of Mil, the king of Spain, who come to Ireland to take Ireland from the Tua de Danon, a very, very important thing happens, uh, most, most important, that they come as warriors because um, there are two relatives uh, I can't remember their names, Ith, Ith and Brogan, I think, who are killed when they arrive here first because they basically announce to the Tua de Danon that they think Ireland's a very nice place. And the Tua de Danon think that they're they're jealous of Ireland and that they're going to try and take it by force, so they kill them. So this is a little bit like the brown bull of Cooley where um, Maeve lets it be known that she was going to take the bull by force and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> um, so... Uh, uh, Don, in particular, uh, is you know is all for war and his battle cry as they sail across from Spain to Ireland in a flotilla of ships. That is the sons of Mil. There are twelve of them in total. The most famous of whom are Don and Aragin, uh, Amargin, Glumgal, uh, uh, Eremon, and uh, Eberfin or Auerfin or Everfin, and uh, they want they want to make war with the two of the Danon. Uh, Don is killed and um, off the coast, uh, and uh, they make land. But a very interesting thing happens because they converse with the tutelary goddesses in triplicate: a Bamba, a Fola, and Eru, who are sort of three parts of the same divinity, as it were, uh, a divinity in triplicate. And it is at Ishnok that Aragin um, petitions. Eru, and she basically says to him that, yeah, you can take Ireland so long as you can you put my name on it, and he agrees to that. And of course, the agreement reached between the Dedanans and the Milesians is that the Milesians will go back out to sea in their ships by a distance of nine waves. <laughs> and by the way, that is social distancing at its very best, uh, because at a distance of nine waves, you're unlikely to catch anything from anyone, uh, never mind COVID-19. So uh, the idea is that they have to put back out to sea and the agreement is that if they make land again, they can take Ireland. Now, I won't spoil that just at the moment, but let's get introduced briefly to Eru. So you have to understand, uh, this probably isn't going to be the longest episode in the world. And again, part of the reason for that is the aforementioned lack of uh, sources uh, of mythology uh, around her uh, outside of those two stories. 
the the Laura Gawala, the Malaysians uh, arrival, and Kot Maitura, uh, and again, her role in that is actually one could say um, uh, not exactly distinguished, you know. So Eru is spelt E Fada or I U, Eru. Also, there are variant spellings, as is always the case with the, the early divinities. <laughs> Sometimes there can be like 8, 10, 12 variant spellings. Era, which is, of course, the name uh, that Ireland has in Irish, e fada, I, or E. And in that case, you see, Eru is e fada, or I, U. And a lot of people pronounce it Eru. Uh, but Era is e fada, I, or E. So the I comes before the or. Eri, e fada, or I, and Erin, E, or I, N. One of three sisters divine eponyms and tutelary goddesses of Ireland, along with Banba and Fola. Sometimes Eru is a personification of Ireland. According to an oft-cited passage from the Laura Gawala, the Book of Invasions, Eru is chosen to give her name to Ireland itself. When the Milesians invade Ireland, Eru and her sisters greet them, each wanting the invader to name the country after herself. Asserting herself ahead of her sisters, Eru meets the Milesians at Ishnak, tells them that Ireland is the fairest land under the sun, and flatters them as the most perfect race the world has ever seen. When one of the leaders, Don Macmillay, insults her, Eru predicts that neither he nor his children will ever enjoy Ireland, and he subsequently drowns. The poet of the Milesians, Aurigim promises Eru that the country will bear her name. Uh, uh, Era, sorry, I'll get back to that in a moment. Era is the pro modern Irish spelling for Eru, and Erin is an anglicised form. Bamba and Fola have been poetic references for Ireland. Eru is traditionally described as wearing circlets or rings, which may imply, along with the etymology of her name, an identification with the sun or moon which is really very interesting. Uh, what I was interested in pertaining to when she said to Aragine how beautiful Ireland was, she said, from the setting to the rising sun, there is no better land. Now, if you're talking in terms of from the setting to the rising sun, you're talking about nighttime, uh, which makes me believe that she's more nocturnal. Uh, and if she's related to sun or moon, I'd be more inclined to think that she's actually a uh, uh, lunar, a lunar deity. Pardon me, I, uh, it must be the pollen. Somebody mentioned pollen when I was at Douth earlier. My nose started to run at Douth, and I, I just feel like I'm going to have the wee sneezies, but it's gone. I managed to talk my way out of it. <laughs> and it is also interesting that it is the poet, the bard of the Milesians, who makes the ultimate bargain with uh, Eru. Uh, and in this regard, we can see her in the role of guardian goddess, or uh, sorry, sovereignty goddess, because in order to, uh, in order to, I suppose, take a throne in Ireland, the Milesians, it seems that some of the brothers, as I said, want to arrive militarily. Uh, they want to do it by force. Aragine is the poet, and he realizes that there's another way. There's a sacred way. Uh, there is a way, uh, you know, the banish re, that sacred marriage between the king and the land, is being replicated here in the story. Uh, and essentially, even though it is Eremon and Eber who, who first take joint kingship on behalf of the Milesians, one gets the sense that Aurgeen is the one who is acting here in the role of I suppose, sacred king, uh, substitute king, stand-in king until such time as the proper inauguration happens. They basically can't uh, come back to Ireland and claim it as theirs without the agreement of uh, Eru. And so in that wise, one uh, uh, has no choice, I think, but to consider Eru as uh, the 
uh, sovereignty goddess, not just the tutelary goddess, the guardian goddess. And let me continue. Although the Eru of the Laragawala can be identified with the Eru who mothers breasts in Kot Maitura, the Battle of Moitura, these and variant texts present a conflicting picture of her pedigree. Her father is usually named as Dalbaith, her mother either Ernmas or Ernin. Her foster father is Coal, C-O-D-A-L. She is usually married to Macrania, the son of the sun, sometimes known as Kehor, but she has a celebrated affair with Elatha, Elatha son of Delbaith, to produce Bress. Uh, so another of these illicit unions that we see so often taking place, uh, the most famous uh, example of which uh, is, is the uh, illicit union of Dagda uh, and Bowen, because Bowen is married to Elkmar. While not named in Bolly in Scoil, Phantom's Frenzy, she is thought to be Lou Lovefather's consort, a sovereignty figure in that narrative. She is later killed at the Battle of Tolchu by Surga, where the Milesians slaughter all the kings and queens of the Tuatha de Danann. And that was a uh, nice thanks for allowing us to come and take the country and name it after you, and then we go and kill you. Eru is also named as the founder of the festival at Ishnach. As a personification of Ireland, she may be the queen married in the sacred ritual marriage of Fled Bonashi or Bonash Ri. And there are some sources. Zich Christ for Celtish philology, uh, and that is uh, Julius Pocorni. Der, ne der name or der name Eru and TF or Rahali on the origin of uh, uh, names of the names Eron and Eru, and that's from the journal Eru, volume 14, 1946. I don't have any of the Eru journals, and that's something I must try and get my hands on sometimes. So, as you can see, there isn't a whole lot to be said about her because there isn't a whole lot said about her in mythology. She seems to be important, but then she's a little bit like Boeing. You know, like you have this goddess in the Boyne Valley who uh, causes the Boyne to be formed and after whom the Boyne is named. And you've got the Milky Way likewise named Balak Boyne. Uh, you have the monument complex named after her, Bruna Boyne, uh, the, the Palace of Boyne, or as the archaeologists call it, the Palace of the Boyne. But I think they're missing the point. Uh, Bruna Boyne, the womb of Boyne. And Lucy Robinson just says, ah, the friendly thighs. <laughs> As Katrina just says, yeah, interesting timing. Eileen Ni Hulawan is watching. Eileen Kunasatatu Falja. But Bowen is interesting because despite her apparent importance, uh, she she only really appears in Dunchenicus. Um and uh in is it isn't it? Uh, the Gawal and Shida. Anyway, in re in relation to the Dagda and the affair and uh, Newgrange, etc., etc., and the conception of Angus Oak. And then she kind of just vanishes, you know? And so Eru seems to be in the same sort of situation. Anyway, let's read a little bit from Kot Maitura. And so this is the bit where we'll get an impression of uh, 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 Eru's importance. And actually, this is a little bit interesting, a little bit interesting uh, from the point of view of, uh, I don't know if you saw a while back, long before all this live myth started, I had done a video called, uh, or was it a podcast, uh, you know, who is the Irish Lord of the Rings? Hi, Anthony, says Eileen. Hope you're keeping well, Eileen. Lovely to see you. Uh, you're very welcome along here. And I think you'll get a lovely warm welcome. Hugh Newman is watching. Hugh Newman of Megalithomania fame. Hello, Hugh. Fáilte. Tránóna Malkara, Konosatatu, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you for sharing the video from uh, the uh, Megalithomania Festival or the Megalithomania Conference in um, at Glastonbury last year. Uh, it was great to uh, to see it and to be reminded of what a splendid event it was. There was contention regarding the sovereignty of the men of Ireland between the Tua Dei and their wives, since Nuadu was not eligible for kingship after his hand had been cut off. They said that it would be appropriate for them to give the kingship to Bress, the son of Elaha, to their own adopted son, 
and that giving him the kingship would knit the Fomorians' alliance with them, since his father, Elatha Macdelbaith, was king of the Fovore, or the Fomorians. Now, the conception of Bress came about in this way. One day, one of their women, Eru, Eru the daughter of Delbaith, was looking at the sea and the land from the house of Mai Shkeni, and she saw the sea as perfectly calm as if it were a level, pardon me, a level board. After that, while she was there, she saw something, a vessel of silver appeared to her on the sea. Its size seemed great to her, but its shape did not appear clearly to her, and the current of the sea carried it to the land. Patricia says there's a good passage in Michael Dames on Eru, Fola and Bamba. I might try and dig that out. Uh, I have the later, uh, re, uh, the later reproduction of it. Uh, and Hugh is sharing the link from Megalithomania. I, I did share it on the page earlier, Hugh, uh, and on the Mythical Ireland community. Hopefully everybody got a chance to see it, but not to worry if you didn't follow up afterwards. More, more things to watch. Uh, sorry, its size seemed great to her, but its shape did not appear clearly to her, and the current of the sea carried it to the land. Then she saw that it was a man of fairest appearance. He had golden yellow hair down to his shoulders, and a cloak with bands of gold thread around it. His shirt had embroidery of gold thread. On his breast was a brooch of gold with the luster of a precious stone in it. Two shining silver spears, and in them two smooth riveted shafts of bronze. Five circlets of gold around his neck. A gold-hilted sword with inlayings of silver and studs of gold. The man said to her, Shall I have an hour of lovemaking with you? I certainly have not made a tryst with you, she said. Come without the trysting, said he. Then they stretched themselves out together. The woman wept when the man got up again. Why are you crying, he asked. I have two things that I should lament, said the woman. Separating from you, however, we have met. The young men of the Tour de Danon have been entreating me in vain, and you possess me as you do. Uh, eponymous, Theresa, means that they gave their name to something. You know, the eponymous uh, River Boyne is is eponymous because it's connected with Bowen, the goddess who gives her name to it. Your anxiety about these two things will be removed, he said. He drew his gold ring from his middle finger and put it into her hand and told her that she should not part with it either by sale or by gift, except to someone whose finger it would fit. Another matter troubles me, said the woman, that I do not know has come. who has come to me. You will not remain ignorant of that, he said. Elatha Macdelbaith, king of the Fomora, or Favore, has come to you. You will bear a son as a result of our meeting, and let no name be given to him but Yohu Bress, that is, Yohu the Beautiful. Because every beautiful thing that is seen in Ireland, both plain and fortress, Ale and candle, woman and man and horse, will be judged in relation to that boy, so that people will then say of it, it is a breast. Katrina, I'm just ignoring some of your comments. <laughs> I don't want to get distracted. <laughs> then the man went back again, and the woman returned to her home, and the famous conception was given to her. Then she gave birth to the boy. And the name Yahu Bress was given to him as Elatha had said. A week after the woman's lying in was completed, the boy had two weeks' growth, and he maintained that increase for seven years until he had reached the growth of 14 years. So he was uh, basically uh, growing up at, at twice the speed of a normal human being. As a result of that contention which took place among the two a day, the sovereignty of Ireland was given to that, that youth, and he gave seven guarantors from the warriors of Ireland, his maternal kinsmen, for his restitution of the sovereignty if his own misdeeds should give cause. 
Then his mother gave him land, and he had a fortress built on the land, Dun Breshe, and it was the Dagda who built that fortress. But after Bres had assumed the sovereignty, three Fomorian kings, Indech Mac De Daunan, Elaha Mac Dalbaith, and Tethra, imposed their tribute upon Ireland, and there was not a smoke from a house in Ireland which was not under their tribute. In addition, the warriors of Ireland were reduced to serving him. Og Oma beneath or Ogma beneath a bundle of firewood and the Dagda as a rampart builder, and he constructed the earthwork around Bress's fort. So the Dagda and Ogma, who are uh, among the chief of the deities of the Tuatha de Danann, are reduced to menial tasks. Uh, so I'm not going to continue too long uh, because this is the reign of Bress. It has been dealt with in other videos and other material, uh, and, and it's less about Eru from this point forward, uh, but just the point being here that she is the mother of Bress. And as I said, the sins of the son cannot be visited on the mother because I think in this case, the apple did fall far from the tree. Now the Dagda was unhappy at the work and in the house he used to meet an idle blind man named Criddenbale, whose mouth grew out of his chest. <laughs> as, as you do, Criddenbale considered his own meal small and the Dagda's large. So he said, Dagda, for the sake of your honour, let the three best bits of your serving be given to me. And thus uh, the Dagda was forced uh, to give uh, uh, a, a large portion of his food uh, to Criddenbale. And that is basically where Eru disappears from the story. I'm not sure that she comes into it again. I don't think she does. I'm pretty sure that that is it, her role in the, in, in the magic. Actually, I, I might be just slightly mistaken in that. <laughs> slightly mistaken. <laughs> yes. Uh, when, when, when it comes to the ring... So just immediately after the Tuatha de Danann um, decided that Bress was no longer fit for the kingship because things had gone to, to rack and ruin under his rule, uh, he asked them if he could stay on for seven years in the kingship and they agreed to it despite having decided he wasn't fit for the role. This is why they were asked for the delay, that he might gather the warriors of the Shi, the Fovora, to take possession of the Tua by force provided he might gain an overwhelming advantage. He was unwilling to be driven from his kingship. Then he went to his mother, who is not mentioned by name, and asked her where his family was. I am certain about that, she said, and went on to the hill from which she had seen the silver vessel in the sea. She then went on to the shore. His mother gave him the ring, which had been left with her, and he put it around his middle finger, and it fitted him. She had not given it up for anyone, either by sale or gift, until that day, there was none of them whom it would fit. And, and, and that is definitely where her role in the story ends. So that is one version of Eru. One wonders, one wonders, often wonders about, uh, you know, how when the same name appears in diverse myths, unrelated, disconnected myths, uh, whether... The Eru of Kalmaitura is a different Eru altogether to the Eru who is the tutelary goddess in triplicate met by the Milesians. So now I'm going to read from Lower Gawala Eren, part five, the Book of Invasions. Um, this is uh, the Irish Text Society uh, 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 translation by R.A.S. McAllister, published in 1942. I just want to make sure I'm starting from the right place. The Sons of Mill fought the Battle of Liffa. There were monsters in the shapes of giants, which the two of Danon had summoned to themselves by druidry. The Sons of Mill, Eur, Eremon, and Ear fought the battle valiantly. The horse Gawar of Eremon fell there. Uh, and uh, that's when where the name Gaur Liffa uh, comes from. They came out, They came there after till they were in the mountain over against Loch Jarugdurk. And that is, uh, I think, isn't it? Loch 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 Derg, Loch Derg or Loch Jarug. The sons of Meal had colloquy with Banba in Schlievmish. 
said Bamba unto them, If it be to take Ireland, ye have come. Not right were the good fortune in which ye have come. It is by necessity, said Amorgan Glungel, the poet. A gift from you to me then, said she. What gift, said they. And you'll have to forgive the somewhat antiquated English translation. This is McAllister, uh, a little bit uh, pre-modern. That my name be on this island, said she. What is thy name, said they. Bonba, said she. And I suppose with Lenition that would probably be Bonva. Let it be a name for this island, said Amorgan. The book of Drumschnechte says that Amorgan inquired after her race. Of the progeny of Adam am I, said she. Which race of the sons of No is thine, said he. I am older than No, that's Noah, said she. On a peak of a mountain was I in the flood. To this present mound the waves of the flood attained. Therefore it is called Tolkunye, but the foregoing is a surprising extract. Thereafter they sing spells against her and drive her away from them. And in that regard, if she has uh, survived the great flood under Tolkunye, uh, this is Banba or Banva, then she would appear to be the lady connected with Fionton or Fenton MacBokra, who does exactly the same thing, uh, who came to Ireland with Kazair uh, uh, and uh, two other men and uh, 50 other women, or in some versions of the tale, thrice 50. Uh, and we saw that, didn't we? We were talking about that. Uh, and in fact, if you don't mind the distraction of it for a moment, I think I'm pretty sure that Kazair and Bamba are... Uh, two names for the same lady. Uh, let me just 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 check that in MacKillop. Kazir. <laughs> yeah, um, an an alternate an alternate version has her as the daughter of Bamba. Oh, the daughter. Okay, say so Kazir would be a daughter of Bamba. One of the eponymous goddesses of Ireland. Okay. Interesting. So after the discussion with Bamba, in which Amergin said, yep, we'll call Ireland after you, no problem, it'll be called Bamba. They had colloquy with Fotla, or Fola. It's spelled here F-O-T-L-A, but uh, usually rendered F-O-D-L-A, and of course with Lenition that would be Fola in Evelina. She spoke with them in like manner and desired that her name should be upon the island. Said Amorgan, let Futla be a name upon this island. Perhaps uh, Amorgan was meeting all the women and telling them all the same thing. Yep, 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 yep. Like the man with several wives or several girlfriends uh, trying to keep them all happy and then disaster happens. In this case, disaster doesn't happen because he's not lying to any of them. They had colloquy with Eru in Ishnach. She said unto them, Warriors, said she, welcome to you. Long have soothsayers had knowledge of your coming. Direct translation leads to Yoda talk. Love it, says Katrina. <laughs> so uh, the soothsayers or the uh, prognosticators, the, uh, the psychics, had, had long foretold of the coming of the Milesians. Yours shall be this island forever. So immediately she's into telling them uh, the good fortune. And to the east of the world, there shall not be a better island. No race shall be there more numerous than yours. Sorry, I have to reword that because I read it wrong. No race shall there be more numerous than yours. Good is that, said Amorgan. Good is the prophecy. Not right were it to thank her, said Eber Dunn, eldest of the sons of Meal. Thank our gods and our own might. To thee tis equal, said Eru. Thou shalt have no prophet of this island, nor shall thy progeny. So basically, to give you that in, in, in layman's terms, in English that we might understand uh, as ordinary folk, Eber Dunn was dismissing the idea of thanking Eru and basically said, 
uh, that, uh, you know, they would have it under the force of their own might and thanks to their own gods. And Eru basically tells uh, Eber Dunn that he, he, he will have no profit of this island uh, and nor shall thy progeny, which in plain English means it'll never be yours, mate. A gift to me, ye sons of Meal, and ye children of Brogan, said she, that my name shall be on this island. It shall be its principal name, said Amorgan. The book of Drumschnechte says that it was in Schlievmish that Eru had co- colloquy with them and that she formed great hosts to oppose them, so that they were fighting with them. But their druids and poets sang spells to them, and they saw that these were only sods of the mountain peat mosses. Thence comes the name Shli of Misha, and that it was Fola who had co- colloquy with them in Ishnak. So the book of Durim Shnekta has a slightly different uh, version. Try not, do or do not, there is no try. The sons of Mil and of Brogan went on till they were in Drumchain, that is Chower, Tara. The three kings of Ireland, Macol, Macecht and Magrania, were there. They pronounced judgment against the sons of Mil, that they themselves should have the island to the end of three days, free from assault, for assembly of battle, or from giving of hostages, for they were assured that they, the invaders, would not return because druids would make spells behind them so that they should not be able to come again. We shall adjudge it, said Macol, son of Kermat, as Amorgan, your own judge, shall, shall pronounce to you. For if he should give a false judgment, he would die at our hands. Give the judgment, Amorgan, said Eberdon. I pronounce it, said Amorgan. Let this island be left to them. How far shall we go, said Eber? Past just nine waves, said Amorgan. This is the first judgment given in Ireland. They came southward from Chower as far as Inverfela and Inverskena, for it is there that their ships were. They went out past nine waves. The Druids of Ireland and the poets sang spells behind them so that they were carried far from Ireland and were in distress by reason of the sea. A uh, wind of wizards is this, said Eberdun. Look ye whether it the wind be over the mast, and it was not. Patience, said Arach, steersman, steersman of the ship of Dun, till Amorgan come. Arach was the fosterling of Amorgan. I know we're digressing a little bit, but we'll go on a little bit. They all went forward till they were in one place. Said Dun, the eldest, this is a disgrace for our men of cunning, said he. Tis no disgrace, said Amorgan. And uh, he spake a, a, a song or a chant and a calming of the wind came to them. L-X-X-I-I. Just forgive me for a moment. I think I need to read this one. And then we'll get back to the story. L-X-X-I-I. Yeah. Alio eith na heren. Hermak mor mohak. Mohak shliv srehak. Srehak kail kihak. Kihak aub esak. Esak loch lindmar. Lindmar tor tipra. Tipra tua enak, enak ri chaurak, chaur tor tuahak, toa mac miled, miled long libern, libern ard eru, eru ard diglas, digital rogeth, roges ban brescia, brescia ban buinia, be aud, audul eru, erumon artus, ir eber alcius, alio eth erum. And in English, I seek the land. It's actually I invoke. Is it better? Uh, I think. Uh, and and uh, if you've ever encountered the work of John Moriarty, he has a book called Invoking Ireland. So I'm going to use the word invoke. I invoke the land of Ireland. Coursed be the fruitful sea. Fruitful the ranked highland. Ranked the showery wood. Showery the river of cataracts. And in this case, cataracts meaning little eddies or waterfalls. Of cataracts, the lake of pools. Of pools, the hill of a well. Of a well of a people of assemblies. Of assemblies of the king of Chower. Chower, hill of peoples. Peoples of the sons of meal. Of meal of ships of barks. The high ship Eru. Eru lofty, very green. An incantation very cunning, the great cunning of the wives of Bress, of Bress of the wives of Buinia, the mighty Lady Eru. Eremon harried her, ere Eber sought for her. I invoke the land of Ireland. 
and invoking in invoking the land of Ireland, our Geen manages to calm the storm. And that's a story that we're going to have to keep for another time because that's a, an, an entire uh, a different and future episode. Uh, but clearly the role of Eru here is very important because although uh, it is the political centre at Chower in which the decree is made that the Malaysians are to put back out to sea uh, and uh, the agreement is made with the spiritual figurehead, the bard Aragin or Amargin, between Macaul Macecht Magrania on behalf of the two of the Danon and Aurigin on behalf of the Malaysian brothers, the agreement is reached. Right, lads, in plain English. Listen, you yous are going to go off back out to sea, so yous are. And now we can't guarantee you when you go out to sea that uh, we're not going to raise a storm when you do so. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Dunn asks Aurigin, how far should we go? And uh, he's told we should go a distance of nine waves. And when they go that distance, a fierce storm is roused uh, by the two of the Danon, uh, believed to be Mananon, although I don't think he's named specifically as the one who causes it to happen. Uh, and the Milesians have great difficulty landing again. Whether they do or they do not land, we will uh, retain uh, that information for uh, another day. But while it is at the political centre of Ireland, Tara, that the accord is reached. And it's all it's all men. It's all male, of course. It is at the sacred centre of Ireland that the principal accord for me is made. And that is that Aurigin and Dunn represent uh, two... Uh, they're brothers, okay? But they, two, they represent two entirely different and divergent approaches to how they should come into Ireland. The, the nature of how you arrive in Ireland is fundamental to... Uh, whether you thrive here or not, according to John Moriarty. And what he meant by that was, would you come as Dunn, the warrior in the ships, or would you come as Aurigin, the poet, uh, singing songs and chanting poems uh, and listening and talking to the women uh, instead of saying, you know, dismiss them and let's take it by force. And it, to me, it is fundamentally important. And in fact, it would have been impossible for the Milesians ever to uh, have been successful in their journey into Ireland and in their battles against the Dedanans, were it not for that incident at Ishnak, where Aragin petitions Eru and promises her that Eru will be the principal name of the country. It is a sacred act. It is a banish re. It is the sacred marriage of the one who would be king, but uh, he's not the king. He's the poet. He's the one who's supposed to be buried here in Drogheda at, at Millmount. Uh, he is the most sensible of all of the brothers because the rest of them come like warriors and politicians. Our again comes as the man who has is gifted uh, with the voice of the heart. Uh, perhaps, Patricia, you might remind me what that... Uh, I'm going to read that uh, section from Michael James's book. Now, I need you to tell me whereabouts it is, what chapter it's in, simply because my version of the book is different to yours. You have Mythic Ireland. I have uh, Ireland, A Sacred Journey. Sure, maybe I can find it by looking in the index, but Pat Patricia McAteer, if you're watching and you can get to it, uh, Katrina says, Anthony, you need to read this. What do I need to read? Oh, are you reading it as well? Is it the same thing, is it? Now, you say 203, and my page 203 is not the same as yours. So uh, this is the rep this is the republication of, of Mythic Ireland as Ireland at Sacred Journey. I imagine the page numbers are different. What section is it? Uh, Asher, let me have a look and see if I can find it. But Michael Dames's writing is beautiful. It's poetic. It's enchanting. Uh, and it's also scholarly. Uh, 190 to 193, I reckon, is a section concerning Eru. So that might be the one we're looking for. Patricia says part five. Thanks, Patricia. So that's me, me at the center stone. We read the beginning of that last night about Ishna. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Let's read a little bit of Michael Dames, shall we? I didn't think this episode was going to be a long one, and it turns out it's going to be quite an interesting one. Laura Gawala describes how Eru returned to me, me in order. I call it Mie, M M I D H E. I hope you'll forgive me. And if that's my own unique uh, pronunciation, so be it. I'm sorry. In order to negotiate with the invading sons of Mil. If, uh, equally, their prospects of settlement depended on reaching an accommodation with her. Standing at the centre of her island self, 
she held the title deeds of legitimacy sealed by the continuity that she could confer on newcomers. Consequently, the sons of Mil usually identify with the gods of the Celts invading after 500 BCE, had a colloquy with Eru at Ishnak. She said, long have the soothsayers, long have soothsayers had knowledge of your coming. Yours shall be this island forever. And to the east of the world, there shall not be a better race. No race shall there be more numerous than yours. Good is that, said Amergin, their poet. Good is the prophecy. No right were it to thank her, said Ever, ever done, uh, or probably ever done. Eldest of the sons of Meal, thank our gods and our own might, etc., etc., etc. On a political level, it is customary for the claimant to the high throne of Ireland to, quote, marry, unquote, Eru at a ceremonial banish re or wedding feast of kingship. Though militarily defeated, Eru ensured that Era remained hers. Hers was the mind and body within which kings and gods, including Lu and Jehovah, came to life. It had been so since the start of human experience in Ireland, according to McAllister, who equates her name with Kesair, the bringer forth of the land, which was symbolised by the primary hill of Ishnach and the complementary birth mountain Ard Eren. On Schleel Bloom. Sorry, pause this for Vicky's comment. Sorry, what's this about? I'm I'm being ordered to pause by Katrina. Listen to the women. We've learned that lesson. Vicky Wallace Southern. So last night I tuned in late to the bonfire with the bagpipes playing. It was emotional. My son, autistic one, asked, Is this Anthony? He has connected with you. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. Vicky. Remind me what his name is. Um, I know that you told me before, and I'm I'm very very sorry that I forgot. That's wonderful. That's really really wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you stopped me in my tracks there, Vicky. That's lovely. Yeah, I want to I want to mention him by name. Evan. Well, hello Evan. It's lovely to meet you. And it's lovely to know that you're enjoying these stories. And I hope from the bottom of my heart that they help you. as they have helped a lot of other people. Grow more, Ort. Huge love to Evan from the Tua. Absolutely, Katrina. A huge hug. Uh, we're throwing her, our, our arms around him as we speak. That certainly did stop me in my tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. The contract collapsed only when the invading powers ceased to believe in the land's divinity and came to regard Eru as no more than an allegorical figure ripe for economic exploitation. This reduction is anticipated and not without some affection. In the writings of Luke Gernon, a 17th century English officer in Ireland, he wrote, It was my chance once to see a map of Europe, described in the lineaments of a naked woman, and in such a form I will represent our Ireland. This nymph of Ireland is at all points like a young wench that hath the green sickness for want of occupying. She is very fair of visage and hath a smooth skin of tender grass. Of course, this is all spelt in Old English, grass, G-R-A-S-S-E. Uh, thank you, says uh, uh, Vicky. Tears in my eyes. Well, join the club, uh, Vicky. I'm, I'm struggling to hold it together here. Um, but that's really, really lovely. 
Indeed, she is somewhat freckled as the Irish are, some parts darker than other. Her flesh is of a soft and delicate mould of earth and her blue veins trailing through every part of her like rivulets. She hath one master vein. See, she hath one master vein, V-A-Y-N-E, called the Shannon. She hath three other veins called the Sisters, the Sewer, the Noor, and the Barrow, which rising at one spring trailed through her middle parts and oink together in their going out. I-O-Y-N-C. I haven't a clue what that means. Her bones are of polished marble, the grey marble, the black, the red, and the speckled. So fair for building that their houses shew their colleges, and being polished is most rarely embellished. Her breasts are round hillocks of milk yielding grass, and that so fertile that they contend with the valleys. And betwixt her legs, for Ireland is full of havens, she hath an open harbour, but not much frequented. And this that's the end of the quote. Prior to the mechanisation of thought in 17th century England, those who had come for conquest sooner or later entered into the body of Eru's sacred word, name and land, and in doing so played out the role of the male gods. Like Yarrow Giola, they consummated the mythological marriage anew, sharing her bed, her food and the grave of her outstretched form. Well, that's so lovely to see everybody saying hello to Evan. Fantastic stuff. Magic moment. Real magic moment there. Lucy Robinson says her daughter is autistic. I totally get it. I just wish I could get her into Irish mythology. I'm trying. <laughs> All you can do is try, Lucy. All you can do is try. Uh, Shannon wants to know if the Ishnok fire was delayed. It was. It was delayed by technical hitches, uh, Shannon, uh, and was perhaps ten or fifteen minutes uh, late. Uh, but it did. It did come on. It did. It did definitely come on then. As traditionally understood, Eru was an active, not a static deity. Her name means the regular traveller, according to O'Rahilly, who points out that although she was primarily the deity of Ireland's, pardon me, plains, mountains, rivers and springs, her scope went beyond that to include the sun. Her nominated husband was Magrania, meaning son of the sun, and he was the grandson of the Dagda, and she herself often bore the epithet Ein, A-I-N, as in Eru Ein and Inerend Ein, wherein she affected a merger with the goddess Anya. Sorry, wherein she affected a merger with the goddess Anya of Munster. There you go, Margaret Ring. And therefore brought to power the Bialtana festival at Ishnuk. There she also acted as foster mother to Mia, whose job it was to distribute the sacred fire derived from the sun. Eru Fola Bamba. Eru was one of one name of a triple goddess. Her sisters, Bamba and Fola, being synonymous with her, were therefore alternative names for Ireland. In Eru's colloquy at Ishnak, her sister goddess Futla, Fut, Fola or Futla is sometimes named in place of Eru and particip as participating in the bargaining with the sons of Mil. As a word, Fola explaining, revealing, and division. Is, re is related to Folach, a division apart, and to Fola, F-O-T-H-L-A, a withdrawing, deducting, and abducting. Eru and Fola are complementary. Eru is the whole, and Fola is the parts. They are both necessary to an understanding of Ireland, and both are required at Isle Namirin, where the whole and the parts appear together. And of course, Isle Namirin is the stone of divisions. We were speaking about that last night in our episode about Ishnak. Similarly, in marrying a male version of the sun god, Eru, as the whole island, chose the grandson of the Dagda, Magrinya, the whole son, Grian. By way of contrast, Fola was married to Makecht, Makecht meaning, Kecht meaning plowshare, to suit her distinctive cutting and dividing role. At Isle Namirin, Fola Eru combined to reveal their interdependence. Without subdivision, there can be no characters and thus no action. Without the whole, there is no shape to the play. Hand in hand, the Divine Sisters lay these inescapable truths on the stone, which reflects both their name words in its outward appearance. The rock is divided, yet 
whole. Wow, I love that. <clears throat> Another aspect of the collaboration between the two, as described in Laura Gawala, is that when one is at Ishnach, the other appears on Shlieb Mish, a mountain near Tralee in County Kerry, and vice versa. Since Mish means a month and is related to Miste, menstrual flow, an Ishnach Shlieb Mish axis may be said to illustrate the fusion of space with time. The world of Erufola was, it appears, a space-time continuum where interchangeable terms operated. It means a lot to me, says Katrina, who's from the Ishnak area, worked its magic in connection to people again. Yes, absolutely. It was certainly magical last night. Additional weight is lent to this possibility by Fola's appearance at a third place in another version of the same text, namely at Schlieve Evelyne, also called Phelim in County Limerick. Since this mountain was and is one of a group of 12 clustered around, and so including the mother mountain, Mohor Schlieve, a division of the year into 12 months may have been the intended reference. While Eru and Fola were concerned with the establishment and subdivision of Ireland's surface, the third member of the Trinity, Bonba, appears to have had responsibility for the country's vertical axis. Bamba married a sun god named Makoel, son of the holly, or the hazel, actually, isn't it? Which suggests a honeymoon spent in the midwinter underworld. Wow. Desiree says, I just got to say I love our tribe so much. What a wonderful, kind group of souls. I'm so happy Anthony started these readings and I got the chance to know you all, all you wonderful people. Sorry, I was just checking that the lights were on. I couldn't tell because it's just, the like, twilight is so strong here. Desiree, that's a lovely uh, sentiment. And uh, sure, look, I keep saying it. If you actually go back and watch the first, go back and watch the first episode, right? And it's it's really obvious that I just sort of, just, you know, doing this just to see and there isn't very much interaction. Um, the beginning, I just start talking and there's nobody commenting and there's no reading back of hellos, you know. And in recent episodes, it's taken us up to 20 minutes or 21 or 22 minutes in cases uh, just to get through the hellos. So it's just it's been incredible. I never I was saying to Tom King yesterday, you know, that uh, I never uh, I mean, I. I the intention was to try and distract everybody from the situation that was going on. And I knew that Irish myth was a place of, of great fascination. And, and it is a great distraction. And it's a great distraction for many good, positive reasons. you know. Uh, and that pertains to Jungian and, and Campbellesque stuff uh, about the value of mythology and you know the telling of stories. That it, 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 It's like it enacts or enables something within you. It sparks a flame within you. You know, it, it awakens something that's dormant within you. Uh, and at the end of the day, that there's a lot of myth, uh, there's a lot of magic in myth. Um, and that stirs something in the, in the soul and brings us to past lives and past interactions, you know, and past iterations and makes us realize, I think, makes us realize that, you know, life is life. Uh, the pedagogical function, wasn't it? I think was the first function of mythology, according to Campbell, that, uh, you know, it is there to ground you and to to help you understand that life has its ups and downs. It has its good and bad points, that the human being is full of light and full of darkness in equal measure uh, and to try and uh, bring the two into equilibrium in some way. Uh, but anyway, uh, this has certainly brought the best out in all of us, I think. Uh, and uh, I don't know how to extend my uh, my thanks to all of you, except just to say it, you know, um, and it's been wonderful. And, and to Evan. And to Vicky, uh, who have made tonight's episode uh, that 100,000 times more special than it was uh, by sharing that lovely moment with us. Um, yeah. So there you go. It's working. And it's working on everybody. It's certainly working on me, I can tell you. Beautiful Ishnak. Welcome to the Tua, Evan Seamus. Oh, sorry, it's Evan Seamus, is it? Okay, I'll take note of that. I'll keep that on a 
post it in front of me so I can give him the uh, occasional mention. Yeah, Evan Seamus, brilliant. Uh, I suppose with regard, just uh, one sort of closing uh, thought and uh, one one cl closing comment and one closing thought around the whole thing, uh, you know, is, is perhaps the crisis that we're in at the moment is calling us to renew or revisit that uh, sacred marriage, that bonishry, you know, um, that we, 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 we uh, yeah, well, I suppose it's kind of forced us to slow down, to stop flying and to stop driving and stop polluting the place. It's forced uh, a lot of councils to stop cutting grass, which means the flowers are growing and the bees are happy and the birds will be happy as, as a result. Um, you know, it's brought with it a lot of pos pos positive things. Life was never normal to go back to normal. Normality is not being stuck in gridlocked traffic, rushing to a job, which is probably one of two or three jobs that you have to in order to serve the debt that has been foisted upon you by modern uh, capitalist Western society that basically wants you to be a slave. Um, and so uh, perhaps we have forgotten that, uh, that uh, thing that I think our gene of all the Malaysian brothers realized was that you couldn't you can't conquer the land you can't own the land it's not something uh, and, and, and of course all, all of its material possessions and its bounty uh, its bounty being the harvest you can't just go in there and say right we're going to take all this and, and expect to to continue that and uh, you know to 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 continue in that vein uh, it's not a reciprocal thing it's one-way traffic it's take 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 well mother earth has called us to, and let's call her eru in our own case she has called us to stop now and to, to think about that whole relationship and where we have gone wrong that it must be reciprocal again that we must remember her now i'm glad to say that the reenactment of the Bialtana fire last night, to me, is indication that we are willing to do that, absolutely. And I think there are enough of us and there are a growing body of people who believe that. Um, that, you know, as someone has just said there, uh, our, our normal, Maeve Callahan has said, our normal was never healthy. And indeed it wasn't. A lot of people want things to go back to normal. But what is normal? For me, there has been more normality in this uh, uh, past two months than there was in several years of my life uh, and on a personal level um, I've got to slow down a bit I've got to think more I've got to enjoy my simple walks more more time with my family uh, live myths and the Mythflix tour has been a phenomenon that literally sort of came out of nowhere um, yeah and 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 that perhaps we need to approach the whole thing uh, with the wisdom and the knowledge and the mind and heart and soul of a poet and a druid rather than a warrior and a politician because the warrior and a politician are always looking for two things they're looking for blood and they're looking for money that the, it, it is in their nature they it suits them to perpetuate conflict and that conflict is not just between them and their brethren and their fellow human beings it is also between them and the earth they are in conflict with the earth they see the earth as something that serves them rather than something that they should at, at the very least be in equilibrium with and be equated with uh, but as i say something that we should have a sacred marriage with so Hope that wasn't uh, too far off the beaten track for you all. Haven't a clue what tomorrow is going to be about, but I suspect I should go back to Bialtana because before the week is out and before it sort of passes on from the time of Bialtana, I would love to go back to Kevin Danaher's work because I think everybody was really enjoying that. And there was about 40 pages of uh, uh, Bialtana made a traditions. And I think we got through about 10 or 12 pages. So I think we could certainly do, you know. Megan Walter says, I've come out of a depression during this time. I just needed space and time, isn't it? Amazing. Megan isn't it fantastic you know bring back the poets says Movanway absolutely yes very profound Anthony and true says Mariana Dunn I've enjoyed the lockdown says Margaret simple things are the most important I mean queuing uh, for the supermarket myself and my wife over the past couple of weeks have just totally relaxed about it. We, we, we weren't at all stressed about queuing for the supermarket. It made us realise that we we take for granted the simple things. The fact that we're able to queue in a supermarket, the fact that we have food, the fact that we have running water, the fact that we have a bed in, in a comfortable house to sleep in, means that even in this time of apparent crisis, 
we are actually much better off than a great number of people in the world who don't have any of those luxuries. And so we say thanks for them. I, for one, am very grateful to everything that happens uh, with regards to the sacredness of our ancient stories and the sacredness of our landscape. Uh, I've made a very personal, uh, spiritual, transcendent connection with all of that. At the same time, I have devoted myself to scholarly and scientific study uh, so that the paths are always weaving and crossing like the threads uh, that uh, uh, the threads of gold uh, and the spinning sun that Anya sp we spoke about in the Anya episode, uh, you know, that um, I think that's where we need to be. We need to remember that there are two sides to the brain. We need to remember that there's there, there's the, the, the logical and, uh, well, I, I wouldn't like to use the word illogical. Uh, I, 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 I prefer to perhaps use the word mystical, you know, and that we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget that we shouldn't be trying to build walls. And, and that's what the whole idea of building walls and separating ourselves uh, uh, is, 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 is something that is a phenomenon that, you know, um, has a certain uh, 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 adherents and followers and people who are chanting for and calling for. But we shouldn't forget that when, when we talk about a wall between, for instance, America and Mexico, uh, that at the same time, we're talking about building a wall in there. We're building a wall between our rational minds and our spiritual minds. Uh, and we've just decided that we're going to be one or the other. And, and that, as Jung would say, is a disaster uh, and a disaster, a potential disaster for humankind. Anyway, I've gone on long enough, more than long enough. Hopefully, you've all enjoyed that. Um, intuitive, uh, Rowan Grove. Thank you. Yes, that was the word I was looking for, intuition. The intuitive, yes, lovely stuff. Uh, yeah, more, more, more crossover between the two, not one or the other. This one or the other stuff is what is, has infected uh, modern uh, democratic Western society. You're either on one side or you're on the other. You know, it started with 9-11. Uh, when Bush said, "You're either with us or you're against us," it's not. It's not a case of taking sides. It's a case of joining at the middle, isn't it? And uh, to me, as I said before, uh, that Isle of Mirren, which is called the Stone of Divisions, is perhaps uh, uh, inadequately or, or inappropriately named because it should be named the Stone of joining together or unification because that's where we should meet together in the heart anyway i've enjoyed this uh, episode 56 imagine and we're still going strong where i can where it is possible uh, i will do some live broadcasts outside i might go to doubts tomorrow evening and do live from there was the signal good at doubts today i think it was nobody complained that it was um blocky or or pixelated or stodgy in any way I could bring the, the little tripod uh, and the phone. The only thing is if I do that, I won't be able to live stream on YouTube at the same time unless I somehow manage to get a second phone. Um, let me think about that. But regardless, I will try to do more outdoor uh, impromptu lives uh, while our uh, restrictions have been relaxed somewhat and we're allowed to venture a little bit further than we were before. In the meantime... A blessed night to you all. Don't forget that it is still Bialtana. Bialtana, to me, isn't a single moment in time or a single day in the year. Bialtana is that lovely time of the year when a lot of things are happening together. Uh, the sun has reached a certain constellation in Aries at the moment. Uh, it has reached a certain rising and setting point on the horizon. Uh, certain flowers are in bloom. Uh, take particular note of the Achenya, the uh, the the uh, the gorse flower which is in vibrant yellow bloom at the moment and uh, when the birds are in full song uh, and it's a wonderful time to be alive stay healthy everybody uh, so keep washing your hands as often as you can maintain your social distancing when you're outside but try not to do anything to endanger yourself and don't forget that it's not just about yourself it's about others as well but i know the two of the, uh, the mythflix to uh, know all about that uh, so Oh, the moonrise tomorrow at Douth. Could be worth doing the old. If the YouTubers were forgiving of us, uh, and perhaps they might find a way of watching us on Facebook, we might do. I'll, I'll make a decision tomorrow uh, during the day, but um, uh, I, I might do tomorrow's broadcast from, from the top of Douth. I'll see, I'll see. It could be windy, and you know, I'll have a look at the weather forecast and stuff like that. In the meantime, Kosov uh, Ikawa. Uh, and Slong the Foal. Hope to see you all again tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night, Evan, especially to you. All our love to you.
great, great, great moment there tonight. So big hugs to Evan from all of the Mythflix tour. Slongerful. And also on YouTube. What a very special episode that was. For uh, Slauncher, Slongerful. <laughs>